Hello, this is Yoshito from the Library for Multilinguals, and today I'd like to share with you how I have started teaching my son to read and write in Korean when he was six and a half years old. So before we start, a little bit about us. I'm half French, half Japanese, but I speak French to my sons. My wife is Korean, she speaks Korean to them, and our sons get English from school and outside. Often, parents are wondering whether teaching a different alphabet is going to be too difficult because it's different from the one their child knows, or they might also be wondering if teaching, for example, French and English that share the same alphabet is going to be confusing or not. So in this video, I'm going to talk about Korean, and in another one, I talk about French. Hopefully in this video, I'm going to show you how I've done it with Korean, so you can do it with your language. Please keep in mind that I'm going to show you how I've done it with my son. Uh, with your child, it might be different. You might need to take a few more steps or less steps, depending on their age, what they're familiar with. When we started, my son could read more or less in English, and I was able to leverage a lot of his knowledge of English to translate onto Korean. Like I've mentioned before, uh, the letters might look different, but you have the same logic of vowels and consonants and putting them together makes a, a syllable. So because of that, I didn't even need to explain this logic to my son because he already knew it from English. So when I showed him different letters, he understood he could combine them to make a new sound. If your child doesn't know that, you will have to spend some time on this as well. So let's get into the first session. As you can see here, I didn't want to teach him the whole alphabet at once. I wanted to focus on the vowels. And the reason I wanted the vowels is because vowels appear in every single word. So it would be those he would get the most familiar with the most quickly. If you look at the shape of each vowel, you can see that they all look very similar. So I didn't want to teach him the vowels on their own because it would be too confusing. You can see the first one, which is A, is the mirror image of O, which is the next one. This one is O, this one is O. So they look really similar. This one is a vertical line and a horizontal line. This one is like your age. This one is like your age, but with the middle line on the side. So you can see it can be really confusing. To avoid the confusion, I didn't start with letters. I started with words. Words that had just one syllable. So these are on the screen all the letters, all the vowels separately in red. And I included them in words. So you can see him that they have already more distinctive shapes. And so the first one, bol is a bee, mal is a horse, gum is a gold, ge is a crab, be a um, pear, ip a leaf, kot a uh, flower, and bull light or fire. So first what I've done is that I gave him separate cards that you can see at the top here with just the words and at the bottom I gave him a sheet with the the picture and the word next to them. So the first step so the first step was really for him to match the word he had on one card with the word he could see on the other card with the with the picture. The reason I put the picture is because I didn't want him to just look at the similarities but to start knowing how to pronounce them. So you can see at the first one, I put them in order. The first one on the left at the top is ball. It's a B, it's the same as this one. So he said, oh yeah, these two are the same. And I said, so what's this one? And he said, ball. He already associated this with the picture and with the sound ball. The same with the others. And you can see that I put in red all the vowels. So I made it really clear from the beginning that I didn't want him to learn to write everything or to read everything straight away. I just wanted him to recognize each vowel. But associating each vowel to a picture, it made it like a reference uh, image. So, O was for ball. A was for mal. So, O, ball, A, mal. And that's going to be helpful to have some reference words right at the beginning. So that whenever you see it again, you can say, oh, look, it's the same as in mal. And then you can consolidate it little by little. One thing I would like to stress, as I mentioned in the video leverage, is that he knows already some words. I'm just showing him how it looks like when it's written. 
Okay, then we went on to a game. So the first game was to say the word when we would see the picture. So they appeared like ball, so he had to say ball, mal, gum, ge, pe, ip, kot, bull. Then he started again, but not in the same order. So you have different images coming in different places, but you can see that they're always still in the same place. This helped him create one more association of the place on the screen with the word. So after that, once we, when he was familiar with it, I just went on to just showing the words. So you can see that again, they're appearing in the same place. Okay. But you don't have the pictures anymore. We went one time saying all of them and after they were not in the same order, but he knew in that place there was mal, the horse. So he could say, oh, that's mal, B. So it's helping him to see that this character represents gay, so the crab, for example. The last one, again, all the pictures in the same place. So again, to associate the place with the picture in that case and the word in the way it's pronounced and the way it's written. So here, again, I would put in the boxes the words, but sometimes it would be the correct words, sometimes it would be the wrong word. And he had to spot if it was the right one or the wrong one. And by doing that, he's starting to, to focus more on the, the way the word looks like. He doesn't just rely on the picture and the location on the screen. So you had ball, mal, gum, ge, be, ip, kot, and bull. Uh, as I've uh, written at the bottom, you can see use help sheet if needed. It's very important that your child has access to the help sheet. You're not testing them, you're just helping them reinforce their knowledge. So let's say they get something wrong you can just point at it and say oh remember how it's written and they can say oh yeah that's not the same as on the screen then once we saw them all in order and he he understood which word was what uh we started again but not by putting wrong words in some places so mal is correct then gay it's not this one okay so if he said ip for this it would be wrong because ge is this one. And like that, so you can say ball instead of mal. So by spotting the differences, he would see uh, which word is what. And he pays more attention to the details of the word. Even if he's not familiar with how to read each letter, he he's becoming more familiar with the sh overall shape. And getting to the different bits of the words with different letters is going to come afterwards. Okay, and to finish with, so I gave him a matching uh, activity. So you have all the words in the middle and the pictures on the side, and he had to match them properly. So here, so he had a sheet and we did the correction that way. He got confused between two of them that actually look quite similar, which is mal, here and ball. You can see that the L at the bottom is the same, B and M are squares, and the O and A or the mirror image. So these two was quite, I could see why he, he, he got confused. But even if he gets confused, it doesn't matter, it's just the beginning, we all make mistakes, and that's how we learn. And it's important to reinforce that not to let them feel, oh yeah, but I made a mistake. Right at the beginning, uh, when I told him he could look at the help sheet, he thought he was cheating by looking at it. It's important to tell your child that it's not cheating, it's actually helping him or her reinforce the learning. So the more he looks at it, the more it stays in his brain. And we finished with this activity, which was smash the vowel or the word. So he had this hemp sheet on the side and he had the cards on the floor. I would say one word or one vowel and he would have to touch the right card. Again, to help him recognize the, the vowel. And to finish with this session, I gave him the sheets 
uh, with the different, uh, this time the different vowels in the different places. So at that point, he made some mistakes with the, the symmetrical letters like A, O, O, U. I can't remember with which ones he made mistakes, but with the similar ones, he was still making some mistakes. But he wouldn't, for example, put O where there would be A. Or he wouldn't put E where there would be U or E. So he started to recognize some of these vowels by, by their shape. And that was just the first session that lasted maybe 15, 20 minutes. After that, we left it. I didn't want to make it too long. In the following session, I wanted to reinforce these vowels he had seen already and add new ones. So you can see a difference between the first ones and the second set of vowels is that they have an extra line. So this is A, this is Ya, O, Yo. Uh, this one has just one, these two have just one line so it doesn't change. Then you have U and O, but if you have another line, it's U and Yo. The same for E and E, which you actually pronounce in the same way. You pronounce these two, Ye, Ye. So in this session, the aim was to, to reinforce the previous knowledge, but also to help him understand that the additional bar added the sound Y at the beginning. So A became Ya, O became Yo, etc. So to start with uh, this session, I gave him the cards again, but this time just the words and just the pictures We seen the help sheet on the side if he needed to. So he had to match them. And so the first one was Mal, so he had to put them together, Kot, Ip, Bull, Kum, Ge, Be, Bol. That was quite easy because we played quite a lot with them the previous session. Here I gave him one more tip to show him the differences between the different vowels. That would help him not get confused between the mirror vowels like A and O. So I told him, look at this, if you add a line, it looks a bit like A. Okay, in English you can pronounce that A. Uh, if you add a dot on top of this one, it's E. So this is E. This one is O. You can, you can put O's underneath like O. Uh, to be more precise, this one is O close. This one is U, a bit more open. Um, and these two, I use the middle line for the E. And for the, the last two, to be honest, it's not really good ones, but that's what I've done. So I said the first one, you go all around and it's like a O. Oh. And this one is O. Oh. So a smaller O. Oh. O. Oh. Like that. Uh, so the, the size of the O was helping. My aim in this session was to help him focus more on the vowels he knew and to add new ones as well. So first I gave him these new cards with the vowels, just the vowels, not the, the whole word. And I provided as well this help sheet again for him to be able to uh, look back at what he had learned before. So I would say, where is A as in mal? Where is O as in bol? just to help him associate, uh, remember the word that would help him remember how the letter looked like. And if he didn't know, he would look at the word I said. So if I said, ah, like in mal, he would look at mal, so the horse, and see, okay, it's written like that, so it's this one, okay? So it wasn't like competitive or anything, it's just for him to be able to spot them. And he was quite happy being able to spot them, even if he sometimes had to look at these, and this enjoyment made him practice even more. So he, we stayed quite a long time on these vowels. And then, so I wanted him to make a bit more sense of the rest of the letters. So I showed him these two cards. So he knew that that was mal. I said, so what's this? That's bol. Okay, so what's the red letter? That's a, that's o. Okay, and then I said, so 
in, in English, he did the same, like trying to recognize the same sound in the same, in different words. So we did the same. And I said, so in mal, bol, was the similar sound. He said, oh, it's l. Okay. So where's l in this, in these two words? So, and he pointed at this one. That's a lot easier when your child knows how to read and write in another language. So for example, for my son, English was very helpful in that case. It went really smoothly. If your child doesn't know how to read, this is going to be really challenging. So you need to work on the letter level a bit longer. So I said, now in mal, you know where's a, where's l. What's this one? And he said, mal, so it's m. The same in this one, you have o and l, so what's this? That's b, like in ball. Okay? So, and on mini whiteboards, by playing with different, different words like that, our, we were able to look at the similarities, differences, and to work out what different words were. Then I could take, then I could take different consonants he'd seen, and asked my wife to make new words with them because I don't really speak Korean, so she was a lot more helpful than me with this. If you speak the language, it's going to be easy for you. After that, I showed this and I said, this is this, so what is it? He said, byol. Byol is a star in Korean. And I said, so what's different between bol and byol? So first he said, ye, and I said, but what's the difference between the, the way it's written? And then he showed the extra line. This helped him understand that the extra line was y. It was so difficult to go from there to apply to all the, the other vowels, but he got the, the concept. And then I was able to help him work out the others or to get, give him the answers. The aim wasn't just for him to work it out and me not to give any answer, but it was to help him start working out different things so he gets into this mindset that he can work things out. Even if it's not always easy, he can do it. And you have there, so a, uh, you have there, a, uh, ya, or yo. Uh, this one is u, you, o, yo, e, ye, e, ye. And these two that have just one line don't have any ye sound before. After we had practiced a lot of these combinations with letters he knew, we went on to this slide where you have different animals. We have us, so uh, his uh, brother, himself, me, my wife, because we all have different vowels in our names and here are animals he knew in Korean. So I said, what's this animal in Korean? He said, Gangaji. Then we worked on each syllable separately. So, gang, a, ji. He was able to remember how to write the vowel, again, with some help of the cards on the side and the help sheet. By the end of this session, he was familiar with these vowels and also some extra consonants that we haven't really worked on, but he worked out from the the activity when we saw the similarities and differences between different words and writing on a mini whiteboard how do you read this uh, syllable or this word. That leads us to the third session where I got him more familiar with the consonants that we had seen and as help sheets as you can see on the screen he still had these two sheets. So the one where I made where I included the English letters he knew and the one with the reference words he knew from the first session. We worked on card games with different vowels on cards and he had to spot the right one using these help sheets. And then we did a repeat if it's correct. So I would, for example, point at a picture and say, ah, and that's ah, so he had to repeat ah. Ya, yeah. then because it's ya, yeah, he had to repeat ya. Yeah. If I said, Yo, he would have to say stay silent. So again, it's recognizing the, the letter and saying it if it's correct. So associating the sound and the way it looks like together. After we had spent quite a lot of time on these cards, we went on to this. So these are all cartoons he liked that he watches in Korean uh, and their names at the bottom. 
So the first step was for him to find the vowels in the words and any other consonant he could recognize. So, for example, here you have the vowel O, O, A, I, O. He could also recognize G that we had seen before. And we did the same with all the words. Some were a bit more tricky than others. For example, this is no. You have n and o, but because they were not separate, he wasn't able to spot the vowel he knew. So if this happens with your child, you just help them to work out where the letters are. And you can give the answer. It's not about testing. Here it's really about making them work out as much as they can and just giving them a bit more if they need to. So they're still very positive in the mindset that they can do it and that they can work things out on their own. So we started with the shortest one, tayo. So I said, ayo, does it sound like mini to konde? No. Ayo, does it sound like doraemon? No. Ayo, does it sound like tayo? Oh yeah, it's not really similar. So then he was able to associate it and then I asked him, so what's this letter then? And he said that's T, like in Tayo. And that's how we got to expand his awareness of the different letters. So he's not, he, was, he didn't know all of them. He was more or less familiar with all of them. And he had some words, reference words, to help him recognize them in other contexts in the future. And after that, we did a memory game. So with cards, so the memory game is generally cards, so similar cards on each side and you have to find two that are similar. If they're similar, you keep them. If they're different, you put them back and you try to find the similar ones. Here we did the same with words on one side, images on the other side, and you had to find them. So again, it's about recognizing them. Those we had seen uh, before, so for example, on the top line, he knew them really, really well. The bottom line, we're still practicing and trying to, going back to the help sheet, trying to work out which one was which. And each of these back and forth were reinforcing his understanding and knowledge of the words and he was getting more and more familiar with them. And once he was familiar, it was easier to decompose the word, go into different letters, combine them differently to make different sounds, etc. Uh, and then I gave him new words, so we used Google, and I wrote in Korean some words that he knew. So for example, here we have Komi. Uh, Komi in Korean means spider, so if you're afraid of spiders, don't look, look away. But we would type it on Google image and uh, in the search bar, and I would say, what, what did I write? And he said, he would work at Gomi, and I said, so what does it mean? In spider, okay, let's look. And then loads of pictures of spiders. I changed your slide if you don't want to look at the spiders. But, uh, so I, I combined different letters together to make new words. And then he was able to read them. Again, he could see that he was achieving something and it gave him reward and wanted him to carry on. The last activity is actually something we've done later on. Uh, this one was a treasure hunt. So in, in this PowerPoint, he would have to read the word and if the word was correct, because the picture was behind, he would get some points. And if he got a certain number of points, he would get uh, a reward. So here, so for example, there were those that he knew already that were easy. So we started with these to, put, to get him more confident. And he could choose anyone he wanted. And I said, so for example, the first one, Ip, so that's a leaf. That got him one point. Okay, he, he was happy, he got a point. Uh, this one, kot, yeah, one point. This one, mal, one point. Ge, one point. Be, oh, that's five plus four, that's nine. So he had nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 points. And he was going up and up like that. Then he went on to those that were a bit more difficult. So for example, this one, was short and it was with the y sound, so that was yo u, which is a fox, and that was 15 uh, points, and it got up and up like that. Uh, 
At the end, so he had to use the helm sheets to work out some of the others, uh, but he tried as much as he could without using the helm sheet. Um, so I was really happy with his determination. But you can see that if you use games, it can be really motivating and they want to do it. And because it's challenging but doable with the helm sheets, it's never negative. So your child would never feel like they are not achieving because they can still get uh, the help. Okay, I hope this gave you an overview of what's possible to do, how to start and to get to something more complex like you've seen on these activities. Uh, these are, some have like five syllables, so quite big words, but if you do that through games, always staying positive, leaving them use helm sheets. By the way, don't call them cheat sheet, call them helm sheet because it's help. They're not cheating, they're learning using them. I hope this gives you a good insight of what's possible to do in the first few steps when you're introducing a new script uh, to your child and that you can do it in a very positive way. Enjoy the journey, have fun.